The future of space exploration, in large part, rests in this man's hands, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. As the world remembers the moon landings, he is focused on the future and the Artemis mission, a deliberately ambitious plan to put American astronauts back on the moon in 2024. We've tried to go to the moon over and over again in American history since the Apollo era, and it always fails. The question is why. It fails not because of the technical risk, it fails because of the political risk. So when a program goes 15 years, then you have administrations change, or Congresses change, budgets change, priorities change, you never get to the end state. And so what, what the President has said is that we're going to accelerate the path. So we're going to go within five years, go and get it done. We retire the political risk by accelerating. This time, though, the crew will look a bit different. You spoke about how the ambition is to put the first woman on the moon. Yes. Will that woman be the first of her crew to step out onto the surface? I would imagine that the next person we have walking on the moon will be a woman. Whoever goes, they'll be working in a new way. NASA is partnering closely with private industry, heralding a new space economy built on mining, tourism and research. Have you considered that actually you might be paving the way for humans to make the same mistake in space when it comes to mining and so on as they have done on Earth? Um, so, I mean, I think when it comes to the resources of the moon, uh, that's ultimately what will drive commercial industry and development of space. It's what drove people to come to the United States of America and then expand west. And ultimately, that will drive the expansion of humanity into our own solar system. Um, so no, I don't see that as being counterproductive. I see it as being very productive. But it's, it's absolutely true that um, there's a regulatory piece to this that has not yet been developed that we need to make sure we get right. That expansion is fraught with geopolitical risk. Government and commercial satellites are already targets for hacking, and the US, Russia, China and India have all successfully demonstrated the ability to shoot satellites out of space. As a result, Bridenstine fully backs Donald Trump's plan to create a military space force. And I'll, I'll tell you why. It's becoming more and more dangerous, and there are people around the world, countries around the world, that believe that they're going to get an advantage by destroying space. But people need to know this. You will not get an advantage over the United States by destroying space. Um, what you will do is you will destroy space. Um, and to the extent that we have a space force, it is, it is to make sure if we can convince people properly and rightly that they can't get an advantage by destroying space, then they won't make those investments. That's the goal. So that space can be preserved for humanity, for science, for exploration, for commerce, that's the goal. And then, NASA wants to use its more permanent presence on the moon to send people to Mars. There are complex organic compounds on Mars. Mm. The building blocks for life exist on Mars. They don't exist on the moon, they exist on Mars. Doesn't mean that there was life there, I don't know, neither does anybody else. But we ought to go find out. I think there could come a day when we find life on another world. Um, and when that happens, I think it should be done by the United States of America leading a coalition of free nations um, and, and that's ultimately what we're trying to achieve. Navigating the path to our future in space, full of possibilities, competition and risk. Hannah Thomas-Peter, Sky News at the NASA headquarters in Washington DC.